this Lent, I'm working on my relationship with God, trying to remove those things, habits, thoughts that can get in the way of that relationship. Those are the words of a fellow deacon who is being intentional about repentance and about deepening his relationship with God. His words are a fitting response to Jesus' message when he began his public ministry. Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. That was the same message of John the Baptist. John's baptism was a baptism signifying repentance. And I can imagine my friend waving out to John in the Jordan saying, Baptize me, John. I'm seriously working on repentance. Repentance is a primary message during Lent. On Ash Wednesday, Father Jonathan invited us, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance. What does repentance look like? Maybe it looks like turning off the TV, shutting down the computer, or putting down the smartphone, and opening the Bible to meditate on a passage of Scripture or sitting quietly and talking and listening to God in prayer. Maybe repentance looks like doing more to share with others the gifts that we have been given. Maybe repentance looks like doing less so that we have Sabbath time to devote to deepening our relationship with God. But repentance is not the only message of Lent. With repentance comes an awesome gift. Entry into the kingdom of God and life in all its fullness. The season of Lent also celebrates a new life. And I think that's the message Jesus shares with his night visitor. Jesus has come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And at least one member of the religious establishment is intrigued by Jesus and wants to know more. His name is Nicodemus. He's a Pharisee, a high-ranking member of the ruling council of the Sanhedrin, and an esteemed teacher of Israel. He greets Jesus respectfully as rabbi. He calls Jesus a teacher who has come from God based on the signs of the miracles that Jesus has performed. Nicodemus acknowledges that no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. Symbolically, Nicodemus is in the dark as to who Jesus really is, the, pres the incarnate presence of God. Nicodemus is also in the dark as to Jesus' message that the coming new age, the kingdom of God promised by the prophets, and the new creation is already here in the midst of the old. Perhaps Nicodemus planned to ask Jesus about when this future kingdom of God intended for the descendants of Abraham will be established and what role he, as one of the current rulers of Israel, will have in this new kingdom. But Jesus doesn't give him a chance to ask any questions. Instead, Jesus introduces Nicodemus to a vision of the kingdom of God totally different from the literal, nationalistic, future kingdom that Nicodemus pictures. An uprising against Rome will not usher in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here now for everyone. Very truly I tell you, Jesus says, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born and open. A word having simultaneous meanings again and from above. But Nicodemus is stuck in his literal, in the future mindset interpreting the word as meaning only again. He scoffs at the idea of returning to his mother's womb and being physically born a second time. Jesus tries again. Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. A 
that Jesus is telling Nicodemus, the kingdom of God is here now. You can enter it if you immerse yourself in the waters of repentance, intentionally letting go of anything that interferes with a relationship with the living God, and open yourself to the Holy Spirit. Like the wind, Jesus says, no one knows when the Spirit will breathe new life into a person. Nicodemus seems bewildered and confused. He must be shaking his head. How can these things be? He asks. I hear sadness, not reproach, in Jesus' response. Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? So Jesus stops with the symbols and tells Nicodemus straight out, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. I think Jesus is telling Nicodemus, You can have a relationship with the invisible God through me, his incarnation. If you let go of all your presuppositions and let the Holy Spirit reveal the truth to you. To be born of the Spirit is to believe in Jesus. And to believe in Jesus is to have eternal life. <coughs> what is eternal life? John tells us to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. God is relational. He longs for us to believe in, to know, and to be in relationship with him and with Jesus. But it's dark, and Nicodemus doesn't understand. So he goes home. But Nicodemus's spiritual journey isn't over. It's been said that no matter where we are in our spiritual journey, of repentance and rebirth. No matter how long we've been at it, there's always room to grow. Nicodemus took his first tentative steps on his journey from darkness to the light of Christ when he came to Jesus that night. John shows us that later Nicodemus comes to Jesus' defense in the Sanhedrin. And when Jesus is crucified and all the disciples but one desert him, Nicodemus joins Joseph of Arimathea to publicly take down the body of Jesus and lavish his body with expensive spices. So this Lent, I invite you to join me in a spiritual journey, wading into the waters of repentance and letting the wind of the Spirit 